Hi, I'm Dr. Chuck Betters. Welcome to Ask Dr. Betters. <clears throat> I want to encourage those of you who write in these questions. Uh, many of you need further help. Many of you need to go a little deeper than our short videos here can go to really address the problem that you have in your life. And that's why I want you to visit Biblical Counseling, one word, Biblical Counseling, Dot online. There you will find our Anchored Hope Biblical Counseling Ministry and a team of counselors, professional counselors, ready to set up an appointment with you right there in the comfort of your own home, a virtual appointment where you can address your problems head on from the point of view of scripture with a trained professional. I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, a question that we have now is this. What should I do if I have a hard time focusing while meditating on God? Well, first thing you should do is join the crowd because everybody who meditates on the Word of God has trouble focusing. And there's a reason for that. Our brains are cluttered and they're untrained. Our brains are cluttered with everything we have going on in life and we're untrained in the discipline of exercising spiritual muscles. Someone asked me a question I remember years ago that led me to a particular song. The question was this, what do I have to do to be successful in life? It's a pretty broad question, but I was, I was led to Psalm 1, a psalm that everybody should should memorize let, let me read it to you it says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the seat of in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the lord and in this law he meditates day and night got the picture here's a guy wakes up in the morning meditates, goes to bed at night, meditates. There's a discipline there. He's not choosing to walk in the counsel of ungodly men and scoffers and sinners. He's choosing to focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's some promises made and some warnings made when verse three says, he, the meditator, is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. Got that picture? Picture of a tree hanging over the water, pulling the resources out of the water, bearing fruit. It says, his leaves do not wither. It doesn't dry up in the heat. And all that he does prospers. There's the promise. There's a promise there of prosperity, of success, of a victorious life, because you're starting and ending your day with a focus upon your relationship to Christ, to find the sustenance and strength that you need. But then he warns, he says, the wicked are not so. They are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. You know, you look at news features uh, today of all the wealthy people who are miserable. Wealthy people who do everything right business-wise. They cash in and they have great success. Now there's nothing wrong with wealth. There's nothing wrong with accumulating riches for a purpose. I know people who have accumulated great riches, they give nothing to spiritual causes. They hoard it all while well, their day is coming. God sees that, he knows that. They're not at all reflecting their, their belief that all that they have comes from the Lord. We can do nothing apart from the Lord. 
You know, in the New Testament, there were rich people. The Apostle Paul was one of them. He was a very wealthy man at one point. He lost it all in court cases, defending himself. He went from being a rich man to a pauper, to having nothing. He knew what it was like, he would tell us. I know, how to, I know what it is like to abound, and I know what it is like to suffer loss. But I have also learned in whatever state I find myself to be content. He learned the secret of contentedness, and that's really the definition of success. So what do you do when you're having trouble meditating? Understand, Satan doesn't want you to meditate. He doesn't want you to calm yourself of everything that's happened during the day and focus upon Jesus. He'll fill your mind with everything. He'll, you throw the clutter out, he'll throw the clutter back in because he does not want you to focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's kind of funny. When I have trouble sleeping, I start to pray and meditate in scripture. And I'll tell you, somebody puts me right to sleep. Somebody puts me right to sleep. I think it's probably the evil one removing the clutter from my brain so that I would not tap in to the power of Christ. Psalm 1 makes a promise. So I would encourage you, memorize Psalm 1. Know that meditating in God's word day and night is a calling that requires a discipline and the discipline will be tested. It's like any other discipline. You wanna lose weight? You gotta, you gotta monitor your eating. You gotta exercise the right way. And it's hard. We get to a certain point, we have a few successes, and then we think, well, I'm okay now. I've, I've lost three pounds. So then we, we binge and we go off and those muscles again get tested. Same thing is true of our spiritual lives. It requires discipline. It requires spiritual muscles that you never really use the right way until you learn the art of biblical meditation. Start with Psalm 1. I think you'll find rich blessings there. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.